For the past six months, I've been using the Typefolio by Remarkable. As a matter of fact, last week I was sitting in the Catskills in upstate New York with no connectivity writing this script. Having used it for half a year now and knowing I was going to make this review, I created five categories that I wanted to focus on for this long-term review. The first being the competition in the market, then the physical slash ergonomic features, then specifically the keys, and finally a compilation of the cool features and similarly the unpleasant feature list. About a year ago when I was researching how to write a compelling YouTube script, I started getting targeted ads on Instagram about a product called the FreeWrite. That's basically a glorified digital typewriter. I researched the product a bit and determined that the price was just way too high for what it was. I was still very intrigued, however. It made me think back to my elementary school days when everyone in the class was given an AlphaSmart Neo, a product that the whole classroom used to learn how to type on. It was rudimentary, but there was something very special about it. It was a standalone unit that had no distractions, just a solid keyboard and a simple screen that fit maybe three or four lines of text. I might buy one soon anyways, as they're super cheap and it could be fun to customize and revisit for nostalgia's sake. Fast forward a few months when Remarkable announced the type folio, I knew right away that I was gonna purchase one. It was right up the alley of what I wanted. If you saw my two year review of the Remarkable 2, I'm a huge beneficiary of the distraction-free approach they offer in a world full of notification bombardment. Originally, Remarkable offered the product at a $50 discount for the Connect subscription users, but that ended a few weeks ago, so the product will cost $199, unless you can find it on sale. I will say the product launch wasn't the smoothest with delays and customers left in the dark a bit, but that's in the past and hopefully the company learned from it. Getting into the physical aspects of the Typefolio case, the design is very simple yet elegant. It has a premium feel to it that's hard to convey across video with quite a genius design. The two propped up positions are ideal for typing at tables of different heights and the lower position is prime for a note taking slash typing combo. It also works well for editing on your lap at different angles. It took about a week or two to get comfortable with the flip up mechanism and to figure out how to seamlessly change the heights, but now doing so feels second nature. Unfortunately, there's no way to prop the Remarkable 2 in portrait mode for typing, but understandably, a mechanism for that would have added more weight and complexity. The keyboard also doesn't have a battery, which is a nice touch, meaning you only need to charge the RM2 and don't have to worry about charging multiple devices. The case adds about 13 millimeters of thickness overall when paired with the tablet. It does weigh a sizable amount though. And please note, this is not compatible with the original White Remarkable. When it comes to the keys, you'll immediately notice the peculiar layout of some of the keys, like the small backspace key, or how there's no escape key, or how the spacebar can feel a little bit flimsier on each edge, or how the numbers on the top row are shrunken. I'm here to tell you that none of this matters. Within a week or two, it all just clicked. If my backspace accuracy on a keyboard is 99%, it's probably 98% here, a very trivial difference. The key separation and the key travel distance of 1.5 millimeters here is very solid. For reference, a MacBook Air distance is one millimeters, and this Lenovo Yoga Slim 9i is also 1.5 millimeters. So let's do a quick comparison typing test. Now here's a compilation of some of the features I'm not super fond of, I'd like to preface this by saying that while a few of these are general design flaws, a few of them could be fixed by software updates. And the Remarkable team has actually been quite good at that as I've observed since my Remarkable One ownership. For physical flaws, 
I believe that there are only two. The lack of a magnet to auto sleep and wake the screen as the cover is opened and just generally the weight. Also with the pen, these two accessories are heavier than the RM2 itself, making the whole package quite dense, even though it isn't very thick. In terms of software flaws, I wish that there was an ability to center text like in Microsoft Word. Whenever I start writing or continue writing something, I usually have to manually recenter it with like a pinch and drag. For the backspace key, I wish I could adjust the repeat rate like you can on a Mac or PC. When editing scripts, as I imagine a lot of writers will be using this, it'd be nice to have strike through available, although they have updated italics as a feature since I started writing this, so maybe that change is coming soon. It'd also be really nice to have track changes available for edits. For editing, I've found that simply marking changes and then reviewing after and making the changes on the fly does work pretty well. I had my sister mark up changes and then I was able to simply erase them and type the changes. Something that works here on Smart Paper quite well. The only downside being that it has to be done locally. I could see this being tricky if a writer was working with an editor that was remote. In this case, it might just be easier to export into Microsoft Word before editing. For the really neat features I like, Having automatic layers in the software for type text slash writing is very convenient. It's incredibly nice that the writing will stay with the type text when pinching, zooming, or editing. It'll even auto erase if you remove the text over it. I love that when you first use the type folio, you're greeted with a Mac versus PC layout option, which makes it feel more at home right away considering what you are used to. There's no Bluetooth lag either, since it uses the Pogo pin connectors. Overall lag is better than I would have expected here, given that it utilizes e-ink too. Text and email is nice versus writing, and if you have a combo of writing and type text, the OCR is very useful here too. Finally, while I still have my gripes with the pen constantly falling off of its magnetic location on RM2, it's slightly better here as the lip of the type folio extends a bit further, resulting in it coming loose slightly less. Overall, I really like the type folio. It really adds another element to the remarkable experience. Their mantra still remains clear and cohesive. It reduces my screen time even more and functions as you would expect with constant updates coming. I hope this gave you some insight into my long-term ownership considering doing another video either regarding my Remarkable 3 wish list or perhaps an overview of my workflow on the RM2. Comment below if you'd be interested in one or the other. If you missed my Remarkable 2 review, you can check it out here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.